We're going to start off with, I have here two pounds of ground sirloin, two eggs, a pound of mush, a half a pound of sliced mushrooms, a half of a medium onion that's been chopped very finely. I have a half a cup of dry breadcrumb. You can use uh, fresh breadcrumb if you like. This is what I have on hand. I have some um, chopped parsley. We're going to flavor our meat with the onion and some ketchup, some garlic, and I also have two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of butter, as well as a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, which is going to go into the meat mixture. We're also going to make, make a gravy to go and simmer the Salisbury steaks in, and then we're going to need some Wonder flour for that and some beef stock, which I have off to the side. So tonight, because it's quick and easy. I'm going to go ahead and mix my meat up in my in my kitchen. Area. You can go ahead and do this if you have if you have a mixer with a paddle like this. I highly recommend that you use it because I mix my meat my meatloaf mixture, my meatball mixture. I use it I use it in my mixer because it's so easy. Okay, let me grab a spoon. I'm just going to put all of these onions in here and then chop very, very finely so they're actually going to kind of melt into the, the little Salisbury steaks. There's a tablespoon of chopped uh, garlic, which is a, equivalent to, I would say, two small cloves. Two tablespoons of ketchup. Use more if you like that flavor. A tablespoon of Worcestershire. And we're going to put a little bit of parsley in here. Oh, and I almost forgot. I want to put a little dried thyme. Let's see, here we go. A little dried thyme. I'm just gonna, I'd say it's about a half a te teaspoon there. And I'm gonna put in my breadcrumb, break in my egg, break in my other egg. There we go. And over here we go. Let's see. I'm put the paddle on. I would just go on the lowest speed until it's well blended. We're going to do that. And when it's finished, we'll come back and I'll show you what comes next. Okay. This is all ready. Don't overmix your your meat mixture or your Salisbury steaks are going to be chewy and rubbery. You don't want that. So let's take our paddle out and wipe as much of that mixture off of there as possible. Now, let's come over here. Move my hands real good. Move my flour. I'm going to grab a plate just so I can put these on there when I'm done forming them and then I'm going to show you how we form them. Okay, I want to wet my hands a little. And the Salisbury steak is really nothing more than a mini meatloaf. And you want to take about that much, and I would say you probably can get four to six out of this. Let's see, I'd say we're going to get six out of here. So traditionally, Salisbury steaks are oval, and I do like to make them in that shape. Ta-da! That's not that much, and I can show you, I can show you how much that weighs if you like. Um, that's a little big. For us girls, I don't like to make them too large because that's too much meat. You know, you're supposed to have four to six ounces of meat at a meal. It just depends. Um, this is very lean meat, and um, we've all decided to try and take a healthier approach to our eating. Exercise a little more. Who couldn't use that? Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and finish forming these, and when I'm done, I'll show you what happens next. 
Okay, here we are. I have formed all of our Salisbury steaks. I have uh, one, two, seven. And they are all approximately six ounces. They may be six point something, but approximately they're all six ounces. So, and I did weigh them on my scale. And in here, um, initially I told you I had two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil, and I did melt them together in here, and I poured off half. And since I was forming my, my Salisbury steak, I burned the first batch, so we poured that out, and then we put the other half back in. So that's why you need extra in case you screw up. Okay, so here I'm just going to put these in here. And don't crowd your pan. I'm going to cook four, and then I'm going to cook three. I'm going to brown these. When I flip these, I'm going to come back, I'm going to show you what they look like. Then I'm going to brown off the whole mess. Then we're going to come back and do our mushrooms and our gravy. And I'll be right back. Okay, you can see that I flipped our first four. And then I added the other three into the pan as I was able to because they do cook down a bit. Now we're going to let these continue cooking with the lid on. I'm going to continue to check them every few minutes so they don't get too burnt. I don't want them to burn. I want them to be nice and brown on the outside. Now they're not going to be cooked all the way through yet. You're going to do that later. We're going to simmer it in the gravy for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to come back when these are all done and I'm going to let you see what they look like. Then we're going to go ahead and start our gravy. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, these are ready to come out of the pan. I'm just going to remove them over here. I've got a plate waiting. It's got some paper towel on it. I just want it to absorb any extra fat that may come off of them. Nobody needs the extra. And what I like to do is I usually like to just give them a flip. That way I can see both sides are done. And they're really pretty. This one doesn't want to come off the pan. Okay. Alright. Now, important, I'm just going to take the lid from my pan, I'm going to put it on top of this plate so they can stay kind of warm. As you can see, I've already made my mashed potatoes. You know, you have your own favorite. Go ahead and make those or make some noodles or some rice or just have bread and butter. doesn't matter. I'm going to pour off some of this extra fat because... We don't really need that much in our gravy. I'm going to put this back on the heat. I'm going to rinse that down the drain. And that really wasn't that much. So you can see that that meat was fairly lean. What I am going to do is I'm going to deglaze this pan with a little beef stock. You grab a whisk. I just want to bring up all those brown bits off the bottom of the pan. Be patient, they're going to come up just fine. And if you have nonstick pans, this won't be a problem. I don't like nonstick cookware because the coating that they put on them after a while, it doesn't matter if you don't use metal, if you take very good care of it, that chemical coating still flakes and I don't like it. So. We're just going to bring up all that fond. I've mentioned that before. In culinary school, you learn that the brown bits on the bottom of the pan are called fond, F-O-N-D. Like, I'm fond of you. And that's where all the flavor is. So, brown equals flavor. Isn't that what we hear all the time? This is a half a pound of sliced portobello mushrooms called baby bellas. They're cremini mushrooms because before portobello was all grown up, it's a cremini. I'm just going to toss these in here. I'm going to give them a gentle stir. And I'm going to coat those down there in that juice. I'm going to let these saute for just a moment. And then we're going to go ahead and make the rest of our gravy. So I'll be back in just a minute. Until these are, until these have rendered some of their own liquid. And um, we're going to go from there. Okay, we're back. Now these mushrooms have sauteed a little bit. I have a confession to make. There were too many brown bits in this pan. 
So I put the mushrooms in a strainer and I rinsed them off um, because it was just too bitter and acrid and I couldn't stand it. So when you mess up like that, you got to have a quick fix. So I strained the mushrooms and I put a little oil, just a tiny bit of oil back in the pan. I threw the mushrooms back in the pan after they were rinsed. I know that's a huge no-no, but hey, I made a mistake and I'm not too big to admit, you know, admit it. So um, I have also put a little bit of beef stock in the pan as well and I sprinkled a little Wondra. This is that granulated flour that I'm always talking about. And this is how we're going to thicken our gravy. Now, you see how thick that is now? Of course, that's that's not all the liquid we're going to put in here. But this granulated flour will not lump on you. And it is the most wonderful thing. My mom has been using it ever since I was a kid. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the remainder of this beef stock. And this is, how big is this? This is 26 ounces, so I think this is three cups, I think, maybe, no, yeah, well, 32 ounces would be four cups. So this is a little, un little over four, a little under, bleh, a little under four cups, a little more than three. And I'm probably going to want some more stock. So we're going to put some of that in here. And what I'm going to tell you now is probably not going to be very helpful. You want to thicken your gravy to your own likeness, uh, to however you like it. I don't like my gravy too thick, but I don't like it too thin either. So the wonderful part about this granulated flour is that it doesn't lump as long as you don't put it into boiling liquid. You see, it's going to make a silky smooth sauce. The only other thing that I'm going to add to this that I didn't tell you about at the beginning is this. This is Kitchen Bouquet. Another thing that I grew up with. My mother never was without this product, as I am never without this product. You can buy this in the... It's usually sold by the ketchup and Tabasco sauce in your grocery store. It's a little seasoning and browning sauce. If you cook in the micro, you know, when microwaves first came out and they said you can like cook meat and stuff in it, well you gotta put this on there for it to look edible because otherwise it just looks gray and pasty and who wants to eat that? So what we're doing is we're just gonna bring this to a nice simmer and this is gonna thicken up really well. And you're just gonna continue adding enough flour until it's as thick as you like it. Now this beef stock, and you're going to put your meat back in here. It's going to be flavored by the mushrooms. And I'm going to wait and salt and pepper this to taste. So if everybody at the table wants to put salt and pepper on it, that's fine. And um, that way it's not, it's not too heavily seasoned when you bring it to the table. Um, because maybe there's somebody in your family who can't eat a lot of sodium. But, you know, we use, uh, we use either kosher salt or sea salt. Those are both lower in sodium than table salt. Iodized salt is very high in sodium because it comes out of the ground. It's a different kind of salt. The salt that is harvested from the sea is lower in sodium. So when this is ready, I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you what happens next. Okay, everybody, this gravy has thickened. And um, I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I'll tell you what, I tasted this and it tasted like crap. It had no flavor. Even after I put all that stock in there, I added three bouillon cubes to this pan and uh, it's perfect. I also added a sprinkling of garlic powder just because I could. Okay, we're back. My battery ran out. This was not the night to make a video, but oh well, I'm not gonna let this camera stop me. Okay, our Salisbury steak has simmered in this gravy for about 15 minutes and it smells wonderful and the meat has softened it's beautiful and now you know what we're gonna do because I got rudely interrupted before let's fix you a plate because I know you're hungry and it's been a long time since I fed you okay let's see <clears throat> let's get some of these mashed potatoes these are just Yukon gold mashed potatoes get one of these Salisbury steaks just like that. Ooh, that's pretty. 
and our neighbor gave us some squash out of the garden Boop. and it's getting everywhere let's have some gravy some of this really beautiful gravy all right Make the plate pretty. There you have it. Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes, and squash. It's what's for dinner. I hope you try this, and I hope you don't mess it up like I did. Learn from my mistakes. And I hope you enjoy it. So until next time, 